Okay. All right, let's get started. Um, let's go around the group here. We're going to go ladies first. We'll go April, Leanne, Eli, and then Jay. Just introduce yourself. Tell us where you're at, where you've been teaching, how long you've been doing it. Maybe a little bit about your background, because I know you all come from a little bit different backgrounds here. So. All right. My name is April Pelfrey. I um, teach at Central Gwinnett High School in Gwinnett County in Georgia. And I have been teaching for six years. It's a second career for me. I come in from the um, Department of Defense industry for about 15 years. Nice. Go Black Knights. That's all I have to say about that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Leanne. Hi, I'm Leanne Pisoni, and I am from Madison, Alabama, and I teach cybersecurity classes at James Clemens High School. And I've been teaching for about six years. And uh, before that, I was a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> so, um, you know, I teach um, IT fundamentals and Cyber 1 and Cyber 2 classes, and sometimes the occasional computer programming class. Ooh, that's a whole different world. <laughs> okay, we'll get into that a little bit, too. Eli, you're next. Yeah, I'm Eli Cochran. I uh, teach uh, cybersecurity at the Delaware Area Career Center. And uh, I'm in my second year teaching, and I like to say I'm a geek to my core, totally a geek. So I uh, teach um, A+, plus, Security+, plus, and then we go through the Ethical Hacker course material. Nice. All right. And Jay, you're, you're muted. Rookie mistake. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. But uh, hi, Jay Mathis, uh, third year teaching. I uh, spent 20 years in the United States Navy before that, uh, five of that as an information systems technician, and spent the last 15 as a cybersecurity specialist. Uh, and then I transitioned over to healthcare information security for a few years and uh, got my dream job teaching high school, teach cybersecurity, three levels of computer science. And uh, we teach everything up from uh, IT fundamentals and PC Pro all the way up through Ethical Hacker. So the students get three levels of uh, cybersecurity at Blacksburg. Awesome. The great thing I love about this group here is uh, you guys have all done other things besides education. Like, you know, this is this is awesome. You you represent a great diversity of students and, and schools and and what we're seeing across the nation. So um, I didn't pick you just because you were awesome. I, I picked you because you, you also represent a, a nice diversity in, in the group here. So uh, so let's let's start off and. Let's pick somebody. Let's start with Leanne. Leanne, you are in the Huntsville area and down there in Alabama, and cybersecurity is hot right now. So tell me yes. what you're seeing as far as your state and what's going on, and then let's talk about a couple of the other states here represented. Well, uh, the FBI Cyber Command, they just, they're moving all of their, I guess they're moving their Cyber Command to Huntsville. So they're building this. The FBI is building this really huge building to house, I think, 4,000 people or something. It's going to be really big. And um, there, most of the Cyber Command is here now, but they are in other kind of smaller buildings until their bigger building is um, finished. But uh, they're there are a lot of cybersecurity jobs or information technology jobs here in in Huntsville and the Madison area. And, you know, a lot of the students that will come out of the colleges here, such as UAH, um, they don't have to really leave Huntsville, you know, unless they just want to get away from mom and dad. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they they don't have to leave this the city to to go and get those really great high paying jobs. So and we have a lot of industry partners that um, will give our students internships or opportunities for internships. And so so that's been really helpful too. although our school um, what we thought our school would be immune to the ransomware attempts, but <laughs> last week we uh, failed to um, to withstand the uh, the ransomware attack. Although it wasn't that yeah. bad in a sense that we didn't lose critical systems in the sense that we you know still had our internet and all of that stuff, um, but we were slow in getting our some of our servers back for our virtual desktops and everything but 
Um, they say that none of our data was taken, but you know, it's it's still new um, in the uh, incident response process. So. <laughs> wow, you know, <laughs> so we'll yeah, there's there's a there's a county. Um, I, I won't name them, Jay, but you might be aware of it in South Carolina that uh, man, they they were shut down pretty much last year. I mean, their whole systems were messed up for the whole year due to ransomware attacks, but. Uh, yeah. April, you're in Georgia. What are, what are you seeing as far as what what your states, the demand for cybersecurity, uh, maybe, for, 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 you know, actually, maybe step back a little bit and tell us about what you were, how you got involved with Gwinnett County and building out their cybersecurity program. So they came to you and said, hey, um, we have this need. We want to build out the cybersecurity program and what you did. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So basically from my experience, my career experience, when I started teaching, I told them that I was interested in, in helping them start the cybersecurity pathway. Uh, in Georgia, we, te we teach pathways. So it's three classes and then they take an end of pathway test. Um, and so we worked on building out that curriculum. And then at Central Gwinnett, we piloted cybersecurity, um, which is how we met, Travis. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so, we piloted it, and now there are um, four other high schools that offer cyber, the cybersecurity pathway, um, and we're kind of building that out. We have about 26 high schools, so we still have some some ways to go, but we're getting there. Um, the beauty of cybersecurity is every company that has any kind of computer network infrastructure needs a cybersecurity department. Um, so the jobs are always going to be out there. Um, we have NSA open down in Augusta about five years ago. So they really kind of brought the cybersecurity interest into the state of Georgia. Um, but now as we see, I mean, we see it in the news all the time now that, you know, companies are getting hit by cyber attacks. Um, and so cyber security jobs are growing. I think, um, it's interesting when you talk to the kids about what their idea of what a cybersecurity job is and what it really is in the real world. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of like working on getting them to kind of get their expectations right. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think you bring up a good point there. Like, and I think the average American public doesn't realize that any business, any, you know, especially if you're holding data, transmitting data over a network, you are vulnerable and if you don't have your system well we're seeing this with the you know the, the oil pipeline right your <laughs> systems are vulnerable to uh, to attacks and ransomware and um this is this is a huge national problem that we don't have enough students trained in that's that's why all of us are, are here talking about cybersecurity because there's such a demand such a need for it um jay tell me about what's going on in south carolina as far as cybersecurity pathways job demand well i'm in virginia actually yeah. oh, sorry virginia uh, yeah, yeah. I, I knew you knew that <laughs> i knew you knew that no but it's uh you know april pretty much she she hit the kind of the same thing we're doing here especially in montgomery county public schools we're a four high school system um and you know i, I was brought in in 2019 to stand up this program and travis again that's how we met right yeah right uh, but um, at the time the governor of virginia had set these really, really kind of broad expectations of what he wanted these cybersecurity programs to be. He said in 2018, by such and such dates, year, whatever, every school, you know, district in the state of Virginia, I wanted to have a cybersecurity program, but nobody really knew what that meant, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, it was so broad. Um, you know, there was the computer science discussion in it, and there's the, okay, where do we start? You know, it's like April said, we had kids coming in to my Cyber One class, which is essentially I teach at a PC Pro level. You know, talking about when we're going to hack, you know, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. So we, we've had to temper the the definition, if you will. But the interesting thing that's going on in Virginia is um, they have, especially in southwest Virginia, where I teach around the Roanoke, um, Roanoke area, Blacksburg area, Virginia Tech, uh, there's this huge technology corridor that's kind of been born down through here, all the way from up in northern Virginia and on the east, east coast, all the way down through and it's just this huge thing where these companies are just kind of lining up across the state, you know, from Northern Virginia all the way down. Uh, and there's this corridor being born where these companies are placing their headquarters in these smaller communities. 
Uh, and, there, and then there's just, just like this huge, huge need, almost like a black hole effect. It's like, hey, if you have technology experience, we're sucking you into these job positions. You know, that's that's yeah. where that's kind of where it is. I mean, I was on a call this morning. Leanne mentioned grants and things like that. We have a Go Virginia grant going right now with over two dozen companies. I think it's building up across the state where they're going to pay these kids while they're in high school as sophomores, juniors and seniors, fifteen dollars an hour to come work 500 hour internships. I mean, it's just, that's what, you know, they're, they want these kids in there. But uh, so it's been really interesting because we can just, especially here in Montgomery County, I pretty much just had, it's been like Christmas time for me. I mean, if I can dream it, you know, yeah. like okay, here's money to do it type of thing, you know, here's the resources. And then, you know, so I'm just like, um, I'm like in a, in a lab every day pouring, you know, making potions about what we got to teach next year. Right. You know, because there's, you, you just, just, there's, there's so much going on that that, you know, if a kid decides, hey, I want to go into the, the IT administration field or I want to go into, you know, computer science or engineering field, I've got a class for that, you know, and that's what's been really, really cool for us. Yeah. Um, one of the big things we're seeing is this educational industry partnerships becoming, you know, more more relevant, more important. Um, we're seeing, uh, you, you know, uh, higher level institutions creating, you know, like the Virginia, Virginia Cyber Range that you guys have there in Virginia. South Carolina has one. Eli, I don't know if you are part of the Ohio one that just came online. So we're seeing a lot of these resources and funding being put into these resources to provide students the environment. Um, I'm not sure I haven't heard about if you guys are having more of a virtual cyber range down in Georgia or Alabama, but this, you know, Industry partnerships are going to be more, and, and I always tell teachers, like in, in school districts, the, those doors are going to be wide open. And where you might have had some pushback and in industry not really want to be a part of the educational model and, and systems, that's not the case with cybersecurity. There's such a demand. It's going to be what can we do to help facilitate it, right? So um, I want to jump, Eli, I'm going to hit you with the next question. Um, I, I, I want to kind of pick your brains, but you're, you're, I think you said two years teaching. Jay, how many years have you yeah. been teaching? I, I, this is my, well, technically two and a half if you break it down on a semester thing, but about three. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little seniority over Eli, but if I were to, and, and I want to talk about my experience on the test outside of, you know, when people call and, hey, I want to create a cybersecurity, but I think my kids would like it and how I answer that. But I want to pick your brain. Like if you were to, somebody were to come to you, Eli, and say, hey, I see what you're doing. Uh, saw you on LinkedIn. What you know, it's a great program. What would be some advice you would be in creating a cybersecurity program for a brand new school? Now you're at a tech center, and that's a little bit different environment. So we'll get some high school, but what would be your advice yeah. to them? Yeah, so I'm in a career center, so I pull high school students all over Delaware County, Ohio. So we pull from all over the place. You know, my thing is, you know, giving students opportunities. I think Jay, you kind of hit on it. You know. The IT field is so vast, right? Like we think about cybersecurity, um, students can take that and go any direction with it. And April, I think you hit on that as well. Like every company needs it, every industry needs it. So when we think about it from like a teacher standpoint, like what do you wanna start with? Well, it's like, there's so many things you can do. And I think, you know, where Test Out came in that I really liked about it was the simulations. You know, we students have this idea of like, well, we're gonna be hacking all day long and then in class and it's like, <laughs> No, no, we're not. So giving them those tools to actually show them like what industry is and like, and if they mess it up, they can reset it, you know, that kind of thing, like doing virtual machines and that kind of stuff, you know, giving them a, a safe environment to what I call like flex their digital muscle. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, April, what about you? When you, you know, you were kind of investigating different programs when we met at the NICE conference, but what would be your advice to somebody brand new walking in? Hey, I want to create a cybersecurity program. Um, my first advice would be don't try to do it from scratch um, because it's already out there. Like use your resources. Um, and and I will like like Eli, like we chose test out for those simulations and everything. And there's a bunch of there's a bunch of resources that are out there that have the content, but you really need some of those hands-on real world experience type things. Um, and so that's where those simulations come in. But um, I would also talk to them and about kind of setting up a small in-class kind of 
virtual setting too so that they get that hands-on inside the classroom as well as those simulations i think those two things together kind of go hand in hand for the kids to really get a good understanding of it but to all interested um because it's one thing to just kind of set them on the test out or any curriculum without that um in class like hands-on experience you kind of need to make sure that you're doing both yeah and as much as i like to sell test out test out all the time gets boring i mean let's be honest i mean you can't yeah, you could you can just open it up and we'll do just test out all day long but uh, i like what you're saying april is making it more relevant too I want to jump in here really quick. Something I did was like, you know, we talked about like connecting with industry partners and stuff. And I got on like LinkedIn and like posted and a company found they were donating. They donated like three servers to us. Um, so, you know, finding some older gear um, from industry partners that are, you know, their end of life in it, but it's perfect for the classroom. And then setting up a virtual environment, you know, utilizing old enterprise gear is a perfect way to start and cheap, right? You can normally get those donated. Right. And Leanne, tell, I, I think you have a fun history here of how your program, tell us about, I mean, because April's like, hey, you don't have to make it from scratch, but you kind of created yours from scratch, didn't you? Yes, I was hired uh, from for the Madison City Schools. We only have two high schools and um, they wanted to start a cybersecurity program in the district. And so I was hired to do that. However, I was hired two days before school started when they were offering and launching this, these cyber courses. And so they started out with a cyber one class and didn't, that, that was basically the prerequisite, which what the description was, was, you know, basically security plus objectives and right. uh, really how they, a, um, a kind of beginner like IT fundamentals class. And so when I got to class on my first day, I didn't even have computers. And so when I asked, you know, how, how am I supposed to like, do a, a computer class without computers? They said, well, you'll just have to uh, reserve the laptop cart. So I was like, great. So I go and I reserve it, figure out how to do that. And so I go get the laptop cart, but it's just thin clients because it's all a virtualized environment. And so then I didn't know, you know, what I could do with a virtualized like thin, uh, thin client. So I just got on on Google and Googled everything, cybersecurity curriculum, cybersecurity games or anything. And I came up with uh night it was nicer it called nicer then but now i think it's called cyber.org and that really saved me you know it had the the curriculum but it didn't have that that lab simulation environment so you still had that missing piece especially since we didn't have you know the real computers so um so i really just remember uh using test out in one of my college classes and so you know, convinced my district to to get test out for us. If we were going to use thin clients, then it would be the best solution. But that that took months, though. So I sure. just kind of try to do some unplugged activities. And, you know, in starting two days before class started, I didn't have time to really get any, you know, equipment for them to take apart or anything. So, um, you know, I try to try to forget those those that first year. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all just a blur and yeah yeah yeah. it's a blur it was traumatic but but you know it it was um somehow the kids still learn something so yeah, they right. they still learn even though you don't have everything you need um because you know they're resilient <laughs> even it, when it, it really it, and that's a good point leanne i, I mean it, it does take time it takes a lot of what works and what doesn't work for you uh, what works and what doesn't work for the students. Um, yeah, um, Jay, I'm gonna pick on you for a minute. Um, so I remember kind of along this line, and then we'll talk about what, what your kind of pathways look like in Virginia, but I remember this district calling me from Virginia and they're like, hey, Travis, so we we wanna um, create a cybersecurity program. And they're all, uh, and I'm like, great, what's, what's the goal here? Well, uh, we've got a bunch of ninth and 10th graders and we want them by the end of the year to take Security Plus from CompTIA. And I'm like, ah, that, that's rough. I mean, do, do you understand what, what, what that certification looks like? Do you, 
no, but that's our state standard. So, <laughs> so tell me a little bit about how you build out your program because, you know, you, you, you've layered it and kind of just what you're seeing, you know, level one student, where do they start? And the end goal still in Virginia is a security plus, but tell me what kind of you, you built out your program and what it looks like in those different layers. Yeah, just for the record, that wasn't me that called that time. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was not. I, I'm crazy, but I ain't that crazy. <laughs> uh, no, so, it, you know, it was interesting for me when I came on board. I came on board in the middle of a school year. Leanne was talking about two days before class. I came on board. I got hired literally the last day of Christmas break before we were going to go back after the first of the year. So there was like a, there was like two days and a weekend there where I'm walking in and I'm like, OK, I walked into this bare bones kind of we had desktops. That was a great thing, um, you know, but so we yeah, had a little bit of computers. I'm like Leanne, who doesn't even have a computer. So we at least had that. But I had heard when I had when they were they, when they were hiring me, they were trying to put this thing together and they kept throwing out security plus security plus. And I'm thinking like, no, <laughs> you know that we're, we're not there yet, guys. I, mean, I don't know if you've seen the security plus exam, but we're not there. Um, so I proposed a three course pathway and it was kind of one of those things where I've been very fortunate being, and I am the senior cybersecurity teacher in the county. We have two more, uh, one of them's in her, uh, big second year and the other one's a business teacher that's doing PC pro with students, which has worked out really well this year for her. But I kind of came in and they just kind of, um, uh, I walked in on Monday morning to Blacksburg high school and the CT director for the county, who's been great in this process was like all yours, man. He said, go for it. What are you going to do? Yeah. I said, well, I'm not starting with Security Plus. <laughs> you know? uh, <laughs> right. So that's when I started looking into, the, into your test out stuff, which, I mean, full disclosure, I had never heard of test out before that first Monday morning when I walked in my first day as a teacher. Um, but I sat down to it. I think, I think Travis, I reached out to you and got myself an account. I think if you remember yeah. that correctly and kind of started yep. digging in. And immediately I knew that for Cyber One PC Pro was going to be the way to go. Right. So and, and I just kind of built out from there. And then, you know, so I, what I've done and because in Virginia we have and I don't know if anybody else has this, but we, we are given 500 testing vouchers every year for Microsoft certifications. I, I think most maybe most states probably do or something, but it, 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 our whole school gets 500 certifications. That's everything from office up to security fundamentals. So what I decided to do was I said, hey, you know what? Certification is going to look great for these kids on resumes. Some of these certifications are worth some ACE credit for college. Uh, Travis, whether you know it or not, colleges are giving credit for test out certifications. I've got yeah. a girl. At Cam yeah. I've got a girl at Campbell down in South Carolina right now for Network Pro. They go for four credits right? Yeah. at Campbell University. And she was the only freshman that got into their cybersecurity program last year. So I started there. I started basics and, I, and, and, and it's worked out really, really well. We come in first week. Hey, here's some PCs. Take them apart. See what's inside. So we spend the first week kind of doing that. And then we jump over into test out. We start going through lessons. We start looking at the virtual labs and things like that. And everything we do in a virtual lab, of course, last year we weren't able to with COVID this year. But everything we do in a virtual lab gets copied on the physical machines. Um, and then my county, just they just bought us all CCNA labs, which are the three switch, two router configurations. So I've got a whole rack in my room now. Uh, I, too, had Virginia Tech had donated some servers to us. So I've got some stuff to play with there. But PC Pro, that's where we start, yeah. you know. And if the kid's interest is peaked at that point, then I'll see them back for Network Pro and Networking Fundamentals in that second year. And then in that third year, that's where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. That's Security Pro and Security Plus. And I've had, um, uh, and I'm doing Microsoft Security Fundamentals, Networking Fundamentals and Security Fundamentals. My Cyber 3 class this year, and I know I'm rambling, but I get excited about this stuff. <laughs> My Cyber 3 class this year was eight students. Again, because we're still growing the program. Next year, I've got a lot, I mean, it's going to go big, but all eight passed their Security Fundamentals from Microsoft. Uh, all eight have passed their security pro and I'm venturing. I, I, I want to go crazy and ham on it and say all eight are, are going to pass their security pluses. The right. county's bottom, the county is bottom vouchers. They said, Hey, you want to know what you want to go for it? Let's go for it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, but they're getting the opportunity at least, but they would have never, a student would never, in my opinion, never come into a first year cybersecurity program. You can't expect a student to pass a security plus certification. Yeah. If you want them to leave your program with the knowledge that they need. Now I can get anybody through a cram book. You know what I'm saying? I think most <laughs> of us have kind of been there at some point in our careers, right? But that's not what we want to do with our program. So we start PC pro level and then we move on up. Now I did try IT fundamentals pro with my cyber one this past semester and the kids loved it. I mean, they have absolutely yeah. just loved it and they're going to sit for the CompTIA ITF. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, that's where we start there and we build it three levels. And, and, you know, the expectation is by that third year, 
they're going to go out with that uh, with Security Pro and, and Security Plus certification. In, in that instance that I brought up uh, with the District of Virginia, I mean that I just brought it up because, like I said, you're in Virginia, not South Carolina. But uh, I, I get those calls all the time, like, "Hey, you're looking for Security Plus?" I'm like, "Ah, we're we looking at a two or three year program, or possibly a four year program, because we don't get to that end goal." Right off the bat. And I like that you brought up, you know, whether that's an MTA certification, whether you're just using the test out certifications or you're going the CompTIA route, build it logically. We're going to have a starting point here, introductory concepts, and, and move it forward. Um, Eli, same thing for you in Ohio. Is that in that, that's kind of the pathway? And you're getting to the ethical hacker level with your kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we do exactly, Jay, you were kind of repeating what my class is, right? It's that fundamentals, that PC Pro within the first, because I just had my uh, new students coming in and we were talking to the incoming juniors for next year. And like within the first two to three weeks of school, like we're tearing apart computers because about over half of them have never even opened up a PC. So you think about like these students coming in as a junior, never even opened up a computer to have them sit for a security pro, there'd be no way. So you've got to always go back to those basics and those fundamentals uh, and then bring them on up. So yeah, so we we do that PC pro and a networking course uh, with our juniors. So we're setting up those foundational knowledge with networking and, and the PCs. And then the seniors we hit with like an intro to cyber. Uh, this year we had to kind of reverse a little bit because CompTIA changed up the 501, 601 stuff. So we kind of reverse things, but next year we'll be doing intro to cyber, security pro, and then into ethical hacker pro. Yeah. What, you know, one of the things that, that a lot of the times administrators, district, state level people, they don't get. So when we talk networking, I'm, I'm a big networking fan. If you told me, hey, you're going to teach a kid one course, it'd be our network pro. I mean, I, the, if you're going into cybersecurity, you have to understand networking and have to have a good foundation there. If you don't, you're setting yourself up for, for not a, not as much success. I'm not going to say you're right. Yeah, a, networking is mean, huge. You know, knowing IP addresses, knowing subnetting, definitely, you know, and that network pro definitely gets that taken care of. So going back to you, Jay, Mark, Mark's your district guy, right? Yes, sir. Mark husband. Yeah, yeah. So I remember having the conversation with Mark. And the great thing about Mark and dealing with Jay is Mark got it. Like he he understood that, okay, this is a three-year program. This is a three-year commitment. I need to to support Jay in building this out. And, and you know, here we are year three and you're saying, hey, we're going to have even more come back. Yeah, it's going to take a couple of years to get the numbers that some of these district people. In April, I mean, you're a good, good example of this. I mean, you, you built it out. How, you started with the one there at Central Gwinnett. How many, how many high schools did you say you're up to now? Wow, we have four high schools now. Four high schools. And and I know, you know, talking about the foundational knowledge, your district's looking at possibly expanding out IT fundamentals to even more kids at a younger age and really, you know, ex you know, that's what's really going to help accelerate this the cybersecurity push is if we can, you know, eighth and ninth grade, they're doing IT fundamentals. So 10th, 11th, 12th grade. They're getting to where Eli's pushing them into the ethical hacker, the CYSP stuff. So um, that's that's exciting for me to see some of these programs develop now. Well, when we start uh, with seventh grade, actually. So our seventh graders take an intro to cyber class now in Gwinnett County. That's awesome. I, don't tell anybody, but I've I've said Testat needs to develop that middle school intro to cyber. Uh, yes. Don't tell them. They might watch this and hear that. But yeah, anyway. that'd be great. Because we yeah, we're I, just now writing a a intro to cyber for middle school. Because I'm on the we're writing our state standards now for cybersecurity, and and we are writing a separate middle school program yeah. so that way you know they have that that good pathway or. Yeah, exactly that foundational knowledge and the interest, right? Here's and here's what it is, you know, uh, you know, we're, and we're not hacking all the time, and that, you know, that's yeah, yeah. And it's not just uh, programming because before they were trying to say that cybersecurity was this programming class, and you know that yeah, either they yeah. the teachers were just only computer science teachers, and they're forced to teach the the cyber portion and. They would get to my class and they said, yeah, we took a cybersecurity class in middle school. And I'm like, awesome. I'm like, what'd y'all do? And they're like, we did scratch. 
and I'm like that. <laughs> that's not cyber, but okay. <laughs> which, 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 don't get me wrong. That programming is great. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is a part of it, but not right, all right. of it. <laughs> For me, you know, one of the reasons I love cybersecurity is it's it's bringing back that CS and IT all into one. You have to understand, you know both how the software is working and, and it's developed. And also you have to understand how, how the infrastructure is, right? A really good cybersecurity analyst is gonna be able to understand both. So uh, let's see, what question do we wanna jump here? Uh, what challenges are you guys still facing? So you guys, a couple years in here for most of you, what are some of the challenges you're facing still? Open it up. Nobody. He guys got it nailed down. Way to go. I got I'll jump in here. Why not? So I, I didn't want to be that guy that went first, right? I was just, <laughs> I'll, I'll be that guy. I don't mind. I took a I'm a new teacher. Somewhere that said, don't be first. I don't know. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> I, I must have that. missed that class. <laughs> Eli's got this. So I'm a new teacher, right? New program. Um, when I got into the program, they were just uh, like retiring an old networking lab, changing it over to cybersecurity. So for me is just building industry partnerships. That's like my big thing right now is, is developing that, um, you know, a lot of stigma behind cybersecurity and companies with bringing in high schoolers and that kind of stuff. So for me, that's been like my big struggle. Um, but I actually just had a, a conference call with a big bank here in Ohio today and um, looking, looking really positive. So that's for me, that's my struggles. All right, JD, do you have any struggles or are you good? Yeah, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we can yeah, talk about you. Those, those are what we'll talk offline about. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this teaching gig is for what, no. Um, a lot of things I didn't tell the old Jay. But um, no, I think for me, it's, uh, you know, with any growing program, you want your numbers to be good. But you also, I think when we talked about this a little bit earlier, it's just kind of uh, tempering expectations right as to what the program is that's been my biggest one i i people get excited as students and especially in, in my communities around here parents get excited when they see cybersecurity on their kids course selection list right um but you know the kids come in fired up to uh, hack some my someone's cell phone day one and, and now you know what no we're taking apart pcs this week that's been a <laughs> challenge for me but it, it's yeah. a good challenge to have because i think you know we're all professionals and we're all able to explain why those things are important travis you hit on that mm-hmm. um you know why is it important to understand the workings of a pc why is it important to understand what uh you know ip addressing is and these types of things so yeah I, and but as far as like being supported by the school system, by my school, by parents and students, I mean, it's been great. Uh, uh, the equipment availability has been great. A test out has been an absolute savior, you know, as far as especially in COVID times. I mean, virtual labs, hey, knock yourself out. Do it as many times as you want. Um, mm-hmm. So I haven't really had anything that's been like, I'm not going to be able to do this, you know, because of this challenge. But uh, I think the challenges I've had are actually really good. They're positive, you know, being able to do uh, a grab a student's attention with PC Pro, keep it for three courses. Uh, that's a good challenge to have in my book. Yeah. But as yeah. far as like curriculum and stuff like that, man, we've been good to go. Awesome. Um, I, I try to, I, I have to kind of temper my own expectations for my classes <laughs> just to fit everything I want to do in, you know, because we're in test out. Next thing I know, we're in the cyber range for three days and oh no, I forgot these lessons I got to do, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's been good. My challenges have been positive challenges. So nothing awesome. really negative. For right. me so far. So. April, and then I'm going to ask Leanne because I know Leanne had some challenges, but April, you unmuted. I think our um, our biggest challenges right now is um, it's re- like you're kind of stuck. You can only grow the program so far because I can only teach so many classes during the day. Um, and then we talked about like four of our high schools, four of our like 26 high schools teach it. And it's finding those teachers that can teach that content. Um, just like with computer science, um, cybersecurity is its own little beast and um, finding teachers that are familiar with the content or willing to learn that content is a struggle so that the programs can continue to grow because, you know, we can get the kids in because it, it's not hard to get them in because, you know, you just say cybersecurity and they're automatically thinking they can hack stuff. And so you bring them in. But you get two classes full. I teach five different classes. So two classes of cybersecurity is all I have in my schedule. And if that fills up, that's it. Um, so I think our biggest challenge is finding those teachers that are going to teach content. 
finding the teachers to get it. I mean, that's a huge one in the computer science realm as well as absolutely right. It, it's interesting, you know, the backgrounds that you guys come into is a second career. We need more of those. I mean, that's just the reality. Leanne, you had some pushback with your district, didn't you? Or school system, or was it just getting the equipment to begin with? Was that? Um, I didn't really have pushback from the district. It was more um, educating them on what we needed. And, and with just coming in abruptly, you know, I, I wouldn't find out what I need until it was already in an emergency, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I need this right now. And so, you know, and, and, you know, the district doesn't work on right now. They are the turnaround time, maybe months or months. yeah. So, um, so, you know, now I, I can, I have the equipment that I need um, when it comes to the computers. So now I have, these really awesome beefy computers. Now it's great, but you know the the lab content or the lab com component for our classroom is still lacking, and I think it's because we just don't have enough room in our my classroom, and we're maxed out on extra rooms, and so I don't have an extra space to have a, a lab, you know, to set up, yeah. you know the like Jay was talking about the CCNA equipment and all that, that would be awesome. I just don't have the room for it. And I had mentioned before that, you know, I have a bunch of industry partners that would give me any kind of equipment, but I just have to say, I can't take it right now because I don't have room. And so that's been disappointing because I feel like the kids are missing out on that um, really awesome hands on experience and all the cool stuff that we can do. And and you can, like Jay was saying, you can get lost in uh, doing the cool stuff, you know, and then you realize, right. oh, like, we're behind. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you guys are supposed to take this exam at the you know, certification exam at the end. And now, you know, but um, but so that's been been challenging. And um, also with starting a program, you are doing 10,000 in April probably knows this, like you just are doing so many things because you're starting everything from scratch. And so I feel like now at six years, I am somewhat ready to even like I haven't even thought about the ethical hacker stuff. <laughs> like I'm not even going there because I just now have it to where, you know, I, I have the buy-in, I guess, from, from the students. And, and so, um, so it's a slow going process, you know, like I, I know where I want it to be, but yep. I know that's going to be a while. And, and then they, they like to put other things on you, like the student organizations. I'm also the FBLA sponsor, <laughs> many coach cyber Patriot teams, you know, which the cyber Patriot teams, like I'm, I'm cool with that, but then, you know, just the extra other stuff, um, because we haven't filled up all of the time in our day yet. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're trying to get those bathroom breaks out from you. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to, I want to talk about those extracurricular activities before, but I want to just reemphasize one thing you, you mentioned, and I love the term buy-in. You got to have student buy-in. You have to have administrative buy-in. You have to have parent buy-in. Um, counselor buy-in is kind of easier. Like, oh, that's a, that sounds like a fun computer class. Go take that one, right? So that one's easy, but students, parents and administration um it, it, it's one of the big keys to at least for my opinion the programs that are successful have all three of those um so that's i, I love that you brought that up leanne uh, but let's go back let's talk about because i want to finish on what are some of the fun things you're doing um eli i know you, you're doing it you just did a capture the flag event but Let's go back to, I'm going to let Leanne just hit up. That was a lot you got going on. And I know April does cheer stuff. So once again, you guys are involved with a lot, but FBLA, I mean, just give me the laundry list. What what kind of, <laughs> this is exhausting. Um, so, so you just want the laundry list of yeah, all the what, extra what, stuff what, that. Yeah, you're yeah. involved with, you're having your students in your cyber program, if there's, you know, I, I don't know. Cyber yeah. Patriot alone should be enough to do that. Yeah. So I typically will have I used to be the only cyber teacher for both high schools. So I would go back and forth in the beginning. The first two years I was going back and forth each day. So teaching classes at one high school in the morning and then other high school in the afternoon. Um, so I had several teams at both 
uh, cyber patriot teams at both high schools. And then I was also, as part of my duties when I was hired, was to also try to get sponsors or teachers to sponsor cyber patriot teams on the middle school level, level for the feeder schools. So, um, you know, I would have to try to go and find out which teacher would be willing to, you know, give up their afternoons and, you know, <laughs> be this awesome cyber patriot <laughs> coach. But um, so, but here in Alabama, you have to be a part of a student organization for your program to be a part of the career tech. And so uh, I chose FBLA. Um, and so I had to had to do that. And so that is typically done um, during school because we had a, a power hour for lunch so we could have meetings during school time. And so that way I could have afternoons free for Cyber Patriot. And every now and then I would have a, a capture the flag team um, if I had students that were interested and we would try to find places to compete and things like that. So. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure you guys too have to write a lot of recommendations because you have students that are getting internships and, you know, I, I think this is the time of year where you start right. writing recommendations for, you know, scholarships and, and internships and all that. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, I, it I, didn't, I guess when you actually kind of like start putting it in a list, it seems like it's, a lot. It's a lot. You know, it's interesting, <laughs> all, all the national competitions, so FBLA has recently added a cybersecurity competition, uh, Skills USA added a cybersecurity uh, BPA, uh, TSA, they all now have cybersecurity competitions as part of what they're doing. So yeah, it continues to grow. Eli, you're doing, uh, tell me about your Capture the Flag event. Yeah, so we um, we just did our first uh, in lab capture the flag uh, this last week. So it was super cool. Um, got to run through it with my juniors, actually. Um, so we had a, a judging system virtual machine and they were attacking a Windows XP VM um, and they they loved it. So if you think of like I kind of framed it around. So I created it all framed it around. Like if you think of like a like an escape room. Yeah. kind of idea so gave them the hints that were like encrypted and then like um also brought their uh like team leads out into the hallway so it was like a telephone game too so they had to kind of like um you know communicate back to their team of what was going on so um yeah they loved it uh, i'm actually getting ready on friday i'll be running my seniors through it for the first time so it was uh, a lot of fun they really enjoyed it and it was like free software on github so i mean it was great Awesome. So, awesome. Freeze always. Good. And then, yeah. And then uh, we do BPA, we do Cyber Patriot, and then we also do um, MITRE's uh, embedded uh, collegiate capture the flag. Uh, this year they they got third place and were attacking uh, drones. So it was pretty oh, cool. Fun. Hacking That's drones. Fun. And April, you're involved with Girls Go Cyber? No. I'm trying to think. No. Okay. Nah. What are you doing? We're doing so cyber patriots, um, and then we have a drone club. And next year, I'm starting a PC repair club, so that we do like a PC repair for um, kind of around to help our um, LSTC. So our technical coordinators that are in the building, kind of helping the teachers um, fix their computers and stuff like that. That's awesome. That's a growing. Thing. So yeah, you should write that down and publish what you're doing because <laughs> lots of school <laughs> systems are like wanting to tap into their student uh, power there of, of what could be done. And Jay, what about you in Virginia? What are you doing? Any well, let's see. Uh, I'm the uh, Technology Student Association advisor, and uh, I do work a little bit with Skills USA too. To uh, for my kids that are interested in doing the help desk competition that Skills USA does, which they've really enjoyed the past couple of years. Uh, we just did the Radford University CTF because they're right here local to us down the street. Uh, we had a top 10 finish in that. My awesome. Cyber 3 class had a top 10 finish, which I was really happy about. 230 teams, and they finished 10th, so I was really excited about that. Um, they loved it, had a great time. Um, we're we're going to do our first Cyber Patriot this coming year. Uh, we've done Cyber Start. I had 12 students qualify for the national round for cyber start, which I thought was great because uh, that's primarily them working on their own for a lot of stuff, a lot of that stuff and did really well with it. Um, 
let's see, I coach girls JV softball and I coach football. And that's pretty much my weeks in nutshells. But um, yeah. I also coach our esports teams as well. So that's been really, that's been a really, yeah. really huge. I use that as a recruiting tool. I don't know how you, how do you guys all do this? I mean, like I see April at the soccer game. She's a cheer coach. And I'm like, come on, really? I mean, who has time yeah, for this? So it's, you know, it's for me, the thing about it, it's like um, the thing about it that's been helpful for me is like, and, and I've talked to a lot of CTE teachers that are kind of in the same boat. I'm at this season in my life where I can do these things, you know? Yeah, yeah um, right. You know, my, my kid's in college. I'm, I, you know, I did my, I retired from the military, milled around in healthcare for a while, but um, I'm the type of person I'm just wired to, you know, I'm one of those, you see a need, you feel it, feel it kind of dudes, you know? Yeah. And it's like, uh, so it's been really cool for me to, um, you know, I said, if I became a teacher, I wanted to coach. That's been my two dreams to teach high school and coach sports. And, and I'm getting to live them both out. So when I kind of think of it as like, I'm living my dream job here right now, you know, so I'll go do those extra things. Um, and, and we've been very successful with them. And, and we have a similar thing like Leanne was talking about. We call it power hour in our in our school where the students get time during the lunchtime, you know, time frame of the day to come do some of these extra things. Uh, it's built into the schedule and that's a huge help, you know, to not have to have so many after school things going on, yeah. uh, to not have to have, you know, to wrangle their students are all there in school. They come, they gather, they do their thing. It's been huge for, for the clubs and, and uh, in technical organizations to be able to meet. And then, you know, after school, you go, you go coach sports, you get to, you know, throw kids <laughs> around the softball field for an hour and a half. It's, it's fun. Like everybody's thought, everybody always talks about kind of, and I know you guys probably hear this a lot too. You do too much. You do too much. No, it's great. It's, uh, yeah. you know, you just get in and you get it done and, and the students benefit from it. Um, I'm, I've loved building relationships, especially with TSA and eSports. Like those kids are kids that you normally don't see on a football field, a soccer field, a baseball or softball yeah. field. Those are kids that, that have up until the last few years, they didn't really have a community, you know. Right, right. Um, and we're creating community now for these kids that is just it's changing lives. And that's what's so awesome about it to me. I mean, you've got these esports kids coming in there. I've got college esports coaches. I've got college computer science professors emailing me weekly saying, hey, you got anybody that's this level or above on League of Legends? If you do, I'd love to talk to them. We're offering, <laughs> you know, $27,000 scholarships right now. Well, hey, awesome. do you have any rocket leaguers out there at this level or above? Because, hey, I really need to fill out my teams for the next few years. And, hey, we'll give them a $30,000 scholarship. You yeah. know, and these are all kids that would never, ever, ever two, three, four years ago would never have had that kind of opportunity, you know, and you're bringing them in there and they're building these friendships and these communities that athletes build and they're used to building because that's what, you know, they're out there. But now you've got these kids that, that didn't have those connections that have those connections. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it's awesome to me and, and I'm willing to do the work, you know, if that, it means I'm creating that kind of community with my students, it, it's no problem for me to do that. Right. You know, but then on the flip side of it, I can go, you know, hit some softballs around a softball field with some great girls and I can go coach a defensive line, you know, with some great guys, you know, so it's a great balance and it's not really, and again, this might be the military background talking, but it, it's, it's, there's no extra burden on my time than when it was when I was working cybersecurity and healthcare. Right. You know? right. I mean, honestly, if we're looking at, it, I'm putting in less hours than I did in cybersecurity and healthcare. So, you, you know, know. And, and the big thing with all of you and probably the reason why, you're still teaching and, and any teacher you don't ever do it for the money right if you, if you were doing it for the money you'd go do something else you do it for exactly for what you're saying jay it, it's the relationships it's the mentorships it's the, it's the potential that we're we're really hey you're good at it you're an all-star in this area you're not going to be the star quarterback but yeah you can you can be an all-star on the cybersecurity team whatever competition it whatever involvement it is they're gifted they're talented and and let's let's accentuate that and, and help them succeed so okay i i've taken this 10 minutes longer than i told you i would i appreciate your time um i, I appreciate your feedback this will help other schools other teachers like i said we're going to record this and, and share it out too. so um thank you all you're a great group